Maybe I'm getting through the uh, the wake of yeah, <laughs> the Packers lost. That was rough. That was rough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, on the plus side, we have been desensitized to prepare for this several times. So. <laughs> that is very true. Yeah, I that last call. I just wish they would have been consistent with the officiating. I agree. <laughs> There's always next year. Everyone. Shall we give it another minute or two? Got a group of about eight right now. Okay, well, why don't we get started? So I'm Celeste, I'm the, the, the new chair of the PSU committee and the commissioner for 1CO2. We have two things on the agenda tonight. Uh, first will be an overview of the grants timeline and process. Uh, we're opening the call for grants. And the second will be a park update, parks update and overview, uh, thanks to Peter's efforts, but maybe we should start with quick intros for two other commissioners as well, since this will be our first meeting with everyone new. Peter, can I tag you? Sure, yeah. Uh, looks like we got a familiar crowd, but just for the record, Peter Wood, um, 1C03, 18th, 19th, Bill Morris, Wyoming. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. How are you, Ben? Hello, I'm Ben Boots, 1CL6. Uh, really looking forward to working on this committee and uh, the work we're gonna be doing over the next term. Great. So I should be able to share my screen. Is that right? Let's see if my computer will participate with that though. I assume this is working. Yep. I see some nuts. Okay, great. Uh, so technically we always have uh, the grant application open. However, we're trying to amplify that with a call for grants a couple times a year. Um, and this will be our first call uh, this January. We'll have the applications open through the first week of March. And then PSC team will review them over the following couple of weeks with the goal to uh, present in the March PSC meeting and then take any recommended proposals to the full AMC in the April AMC meeting. The full grant guidelines and policies are on the AMC website, um, but highlights, you know, applications to include what the grant will be spent on, uh, who will benefit, why it's needed. This can be brief as long as it's uh, complete and answering those questions and is clear. Grants can be made in one, two, or four thousand dollar amounts per calendar year. You need to submit an itemized project specific budget with it. It cannot be used for operating costs or administrative expenses. 
If the grant is approved, you'll be required to make a report within, I cannot see my notes, 60 days of the fund disbursement. Uh, but again, the full policies and rules are on the, the website and I'll reshare the link there in a moment when I'm no longer projecting. Uh, there's a link to the, the application. We would be happy to support anyone who's um, applying if they have questions about the policies or about what to submit. Um, all of the past grants are also online for, for reference as well. Uh, if you want to see what the NC has funded in the past. Any questions about the call for grants? No, but that was helpful. Thank you. Is that going to be posted somewhere so we can share it with people? Um, we should be able to have it posted to the website. Uh, so of the I graphic can. specifically. Yeah. I know I've uh, seen it. I forget where it is. Yep, that should be doable. I am doing? going to stop sharing then and suggest we move right along to the state of the parks and public space. Fiona is raising Fiona? her hand. Ah, thanks. Fiona, go ahead. Hi, Celeste, thanks. I just was curious about um, the um, marketing around this. Um, does this need to be sent out or will mm -hmm. it be sent out to the listserv or are there other venues that you plan on I mean, does it need to be marketed? Is that part of the um, the way it was created? Will it be marketed? Uh, I think sending out to the neighborhood listserv is a great point. We could share this, um, maybe the, these slides specifically, uh, along with a, a link to the, the policies um, and a quick summary. Um, I think it'll be great to, if we announce it, you know, I'll make an announcement next week as well during the regular meeting that this is open and available. Um, otherwise, in terms of marketing, great to pass it along if you're in touch with any of, you know, in, in regular communication with any nonprofit or community organization in the neighborhood. Otherwise, um, it's just good to remind them that it's open. It Again, technically the, the application is always open, uh, we're just trying to encourage this uh, more regular process of uh, facilitating the grants. But open to other ideas on how to spread the word as well. Thank you. Any other so, questions? Yeah, comments? Well, I think mm -hmm. it's a good segue for, because we have a pretty short agenda, right? Uh, so I've, I've actually, I mean, it's kind of almost a non-statement, but I've had some constituents that seem to have interest in grants already. They haven't actually, you know, like completely formalized or even partially formalized a proposal, but we'll, we'll hopefully have some stuff in the near future. Uh, mostly like beautification efforts, but we'll, they'll go through the formal process. So it's transparent and everything but uh, just so that we don't feel like we're shouting into a void looking for people to get <laughs> do grant applications. There's, uh, I've heard some, some whispers, but uh, is it okay for me to advance? It'll be really quick with the, like a parks update. It's, it's not, it's actually not much of an update yeah. because, <laughs> because the person that has the information has not fully responded. But I mean, I just, my idea, and it might be more appropriate for me to just do it during monthly meetings, maybe quarterly, instead of the committee meeting, just because there's a larger audience. But I was just kind of going through the DC maps that show all of the public spaces. And it, it can it vary a lot from month to month, really. But I was looking at what's you know in our ANC. We have Calorama Park, Walter Pierce Park, Hargrove Park, there's Unity Park, and then there's a bunch of different triangles, that one from 7-Eleven, one kitty corner from 7-Eleven from the Gabonese, 
uh, embassy. There's the other one that's on the curve of Biltmore going up to Calvert. Then there's another one that's on Harvard. Uh, then there's your, our schools, H.G. Cook, Oyster Adams, Murray Reed. Then we have different you know, housing projects, things like that, or affordable housing units. Then we have plazas and sidewalks. So there's a lot and then, you know, it varies. And uh, I bring that up just because I don't know if it's the best just to go to it in a committee to overwhelm a small group as opposed to being like finding a middle ground with a larger audience. But uh, there is, I mean, know that Calaron Park's gotten a lot of use. And so I think that it's good, but also, uh, well, one thing I can tangible on the sidewalk on Columbia, there was a water leak that was possibly freezing at night and that's been fixed. That was good. It took six weeks, but stuff like that is helpful. Just talking to finding out who can do it. I mean, it's, it's tricky. I, that's actually a good example of kind of the bureaucracy and red tape we deal with, which is, I think it's because it's technically department, uh, so it's technically a national park service property, but they have DGS and all department of general services and from DC and also department of parks and recreation work on the facilities, but then they had to get DC water to shut off the water so they could have a contractor come in and actually do the repair. So. <laughs> Uh, I think that's kind of a typical dynamic, at least for that part. But it was at least pretty informative for me because sometimes that whole process isn't made very transparent because it's kind of gritty, but it's, it's uh, well, there was a repair rate, so that was good. And uh, what else? I mean, so I, I, we had talked about trying to understand the budget situation for different parks. And I've been in contact with our DPR contact, but he's trying to get it from someone. So we have actual numbers and we're waiting so <laughs> uh unfortunately we don't have clarity on that yet but uh i do know just from just talking to constituents because there's a triangle in front of 7-eleven that could use some beautification and i'm trying to make sure that the process is understood or clarified another bullet point that i've been waiting for some more information on from the proper dpr people but for the most part i've been told that a triangle like that was really small, like it's kind of this is a bus stop, and the one that uh, I forget exactly the name of if they have it, if they're formally organized. I think they are at the Biltmore curve, right by the bus stop going to to uh, Calvert. They have uh, put a lot of time and money into maintaining that. So things like that can be done, sort of akin to like the strip of grass next to the curb on the street. Or basically, if it's a small enough plot of land and it's not intrusive, the city encourages people to spend time and money <laughs> instead of them doing it to make it look nice. So, uh, and if if anyone has any idea or if, on this call or otherwise, of like for example, the Gabonese Embassy, I think does that across where the new Capital bike share is installed on Columbia across the street from the Promenade and 7-Eleven. I know they do something similar. So I'm hoping that we can get at some point organized tenants, organizations from the intersection to say what they'd like it to look like. So we can get some some resources together to beautify that. So those are some ideas I've been told from constituents. That's not even me speaking. So there's definitely potential and it could be tied into the grant process too. We'll see what people have, uh, what constituents have interest in. But besides that, uh, I mean, I think the other thing that we all got an email on, BB&T Plaza, it seems to be the tree proposal that the previous ANC had passed that seemed to be going through is not going to happen in its current state. Uh, I imagine we'll talk about that with a little bit more uh, just focus at the ANC meeting in, in a couple weeks or next week, geez, next week. Uh, but yeah, so that's the things I found out so far. Any questions, things to add on, please, uh, let's hear it. <laughs> uh, Brian, you have your hand raised. Yeah, hey, Peter, um, I just wanted to, to throw this out there since none of you were um, uh, on the ANC uh, a couple of years ago. So we were, the bid was um, working on a gateway project and one of the uh, one of the pieces of that is the was the park um, in front of 7-Eleven that you're talking about. So are you um, talking about that? I should distinguish, I forgot to mention because people want Hargrove Park. Yeah, no, not Hargrove Park. Okay, so this yeah. So is yeah, the triangle on the same side of the street is that one. So, um, yeah, so we we had some some plans drawn up. We were trying to get some uh, some funding to uh, do a rain garden there, um, and and that park is actually 
named for somebody. It may be informally, but it was a former ANC chair, and I don't have that on the. Okay, I did not know that. Um, yeah, um, I can I can figure that out. Anyway, but the um, the uh, we didn't get the grants we were looking for to do that. Um, so it's it's been shelved at least for now. It, it could come up again. Um, but just just a you know heads up. There are no impending oh, plans for it, but there's been a little bit of uh, interest. That's very good. I mean, like any plan, I always make sure it's transparent. So that's helpful uh, to get as many people that are invested in it as possible. So I'll loop you in and then you know we'll go forward and yeah, go thanks. Through, things like that. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, I, I think the last uh, proposal for the, the tree plots at bb &T came through PZT. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. No, I just think it's interesting at least come on. Oh, it's all right. Um, I was just looking at it over this afternoon briefly. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it will come up next week. Um, and thanks for endeavoring to pull some some information together relatively short notice. I do think it would be great to do a quarterly yeah, update. Better, um, I promise. No, no. <laughs> it wasn't it's entirely my fault. <laughs> I was gonna take pictures or videos, but I, it started icing or sleeting the other day. So I was like, I'll I'll get better photos when it's clear weather. <laughs> no, apologies needed. Just uh, you know, I, everything you're saying about tracking down the right people and stuff um, takes time initially. And I know uh, aiming to do these updates during this meeting and also finding a way to share that information back in the larger meetings uh, because parks are a question that we all get pretty regularly from constituents. So many people would be interested to hear about the updates on the budget and, and so forth. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully we'll get more, more information. A lot of people, especially because of New Year, I think in different agencies are just swamped. Like I've had multiple people or they're super nice, but I had to email them several times. And then they're like, oh, you were actually nice about like pestering me. You weren't angry. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know you're really busy. I'm like, I really am, I'm sorry. So yeah, that's a good approach. Just as a, a word of, of advice. <laughs> yeah. Empathy goes a long way. <laughs> Very true. Are there, if that's it for, for Parks then, um, are there any other questions or comments from commissioners or the public? Uh, I, I yeah. was surprised by the BB&T news. Did you want to get into it today or wait until next month? We can get into it. I read the email for about two, 10 seconds, so would lean on uh, my fellow commissioners who may have been come a little more informed today. I can I can talk about that for a second if you want, since it was my email. Um, That'd be great, yeah, Thank you. So yeah, so basically, um, I, well, the summary was in the email, but um, so uh, yeah, so we've been working on this project for a year and a half or so. A and C uh, looked at it. They um, had some objections. The original plan had trees kind of throughout the plaza. Um, sorry, this feels weird being the only one on video. So um, uh, the original one had um, trees throughout the plaza. Um, the feeling was that they wanted to, to keep space um, open to, you know, to be able to activate the, the plaza for whatever they may need to. Um, so uh, there was the plan drawn up by Alicia that, um, that was part of the eventual resolution. Um, and it was obviously very rough and not to scale. And so when we tried to convert it to uh, to a scale drawing, um, there were just too many conflicts with the um, uh, accessibility, with pedestrian room, with the underground um, um, stuff there, with the other physical parts of the of the thing. So um, it it didn't really work to to that scale. And so um, uh, elite the um, the uh, landscape guy. Um, basically said that, you know, just doing it around the edge, you might be able to do, you know, one or two trees, but not really the, the kind of um, situation that would provide the shade and, and um, kind of landscaping that, uh, that we were looking for. Um, so yeah, so basically that's, that's where it is. Uh, we, we're still interested in, in pursuing this. Um, 
the ANC is substantially different now than it was last year, so um, may get to a different result uh, should this uh, go through again. Um, and um, yeah, that's the that's the short of it. There was a, a relocation of the bike share station planned, mm -hmm. I think. Is that relocation going to go forward or is that pending this project? Uh, it was pending the project um, just because that needed to be a part of it. Um, that doesn't mean it can't happen without the trees, um, but that was part of part of this. Um, well, I'd actually, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd actually asked the DDOT bike share people about that um, late in the fall, um, if that was something we could go ahead and do or if, and so they wanted to, to wait for all this, but, um, but again, it conceivably could go through without the, uh, the trees. There could be some of that done. Thank you. And the, the landscape, the landscaper who, who did this design, um, is this new proposal or not proposal, this new concept around just a couple of trees that that's just a response from them right they haven't actually drawn anything up of what right yeah like. and in fact the um or the, the last yeah the last um the last drawing that was in that um uh the last mock-up was actually something i put together because he wasn't able to devote time to it he basically had took his file that he'd been working on uh, and gave it to me and said you know you know, these are kind of some things and I, I do something and he's like, no, that can't go there. And so, um, so I was playing with it back and forth with him, but, um, and then he said, he talked to some other people and they said that, um, that for the reasons in the email that it just, uh, it wasn't working like that. And just for our information, was he doing this, like, is this pro bono support? Is he doing this? No, he works, he works for the, DDOT. He works for the oh, works urban, for uh, okay. urban Just landscaping. Okay, just where he's coming from. Okay. Urban forestry, that's it, yeah. And the project, I mean, the I mean, the thing we were excited, well, one of the things is that is, is this is something that would be completely funded by DDOT. Um, yeah. It wouldn't be looking for grants or whatever, things like when we're trying to do that rain garden, we would have to you know, rely on grants or outside money. This would be just part of DDOT's urban forestry. Okay, well, it sounds like this committee should get in touch with the landscaper to continue those conversations. Yeah, and he's been, um, he, he came to, uh, to meetings before um, and obviously via Zoom is even easier. Um, so I, I can't speak for him, but I, I imagine we'd be able to to get him to uh, to come to a, a committee meeting to, to discuss it. Great, and I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's a preference amongst the other commissioners on which committee this falls to specifically, but happy for it to be part of our discussion next month. Uh, if we can bring him in and the rest of the ANC is happy as well. Yeah, let, just let me know if you'd like um, me to extend an invitation or if uh, if you'd like me to pass his info along. Um, okay. And Brian, can I ask one more question? Mm -hmm. Going back to the rain garden, do you have any, you must have some, some documents and plans around what this would look like, what it would cost. Is any of that possible to be shared? Um, I'm trying to think, we didn't, we didn't get really far down the road. Um, but there's, there was, I believe there were some, some rough sketches. Um, and there's also a, um, a, uh, cause it was part of the, the gateway. And so it was, yeah. it was going to be, you know, kind of a welcome to Morgan, not like big and splashy, but, um, subtle there. Um, so there was, there was a, um, the concept had a, um, a sculptural, sculptural element kind of at the peak mm -hmm. of the, uh, of the park that's closest to the Hilton, um, that um, I'm trying to remember. It's been it's been a year and a half since I put eyes on that. Um, I'll look around. I think there's I think there's something. Um, um, I'll see what I can find. Thank you. Uh, yeah, appreciate anything you pass on. Other commissioners, additional comments, thoughts.
I guess I will just, yeah, I do like the idea of, I mean, like I said, trying to find the right uh, platform for community input for what to do, get something going, not just on that specific triangle park, but you know, other parts of the neighborhood. So uh, this stuff is something I want to go through both in garden stuff. And then I think some, like there's good opportunities for our, like I kind of mentioned earlier, art beautification and things like that. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll email you to both, well, all of you actually, I guess everyone on this call. <laughs> so we can uh, get an idea of where that might be headed with the 7-Eleven Plaza for a start. I, I just want to thank Sharon, or thank you, Brian, for uh, sharing the history. That was actually very informative and helpful. That will help moving. Yeah, happy to help. And I, I haven't met all of you in person. Met some of you, but um, but feel free to reach out anytime. Um, my well, you all have my email address now since I've emailed all of you. So um, yeah. 2021. We have no bodies, only computer screens. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate the additional institutional mem memory with all of us being new as well. It's, it's kindly offered. Any other comments, questions? I was going to make a couple notes just on the updates on vaccine appointments um, and such, but this is a very small group and I think everyone here is already quite aware of all of those updates. They change quickly too. They do change the date. <laughs> but I'll um I'll bring the those announcements to next week's meeting with a larger crowd. Sounds great. Great. Well, I will move to adjourn then. Good seeing everyone. Thanks for coming out. See you all next week. Great. Thank you all. Thanks.